So in this video we're going to get over our next hurdle, which is to calculate the centre of gravity. Once we've done that we can move on to more advanced dynamic calculations. Now if you watch other motorcycle YouTubers, you may have seen Fortnite recently did a video on calculating the centre of gravity, both X and Y. The equation he's used is correct, but he has missed out a few explanations and there are some things missing around it, which I'd like to explain in a bit more detail. So I'm going to derive the equation and with that hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what's actually happening. So let's get into it. So let's start with taking a look at the calculation for the X position of the centre of gravity because in the video there was one unnecessary step which i like to clear up and that may help you to understand a little bit better what this is actually doing. So we have FR which is the force on the rear plus FF which is the force on the front, add those together and we get total weight of the bike. So if we take moments around to balance the forces here, so we take a moment around the rear wheel, we take the force on the front wheel times the distance which is the wheelbase. So that's FF times W. That has to be equal to the full weight of the motorcycle times the X position. So in order to get the X position, we balance forces. We know that if we have a mass on the front at a distance of the wheelbase, this is our FF times W, it has to be equal to our force of the total bike at the distance of X, which is the X position of the center of gravity. So that gives us X equals the force on the front of the bike times by the wheelbase divided by the total weight of the bike. Now we can actually remove the wheelbase from the fraction here. So that will give us the weight on the front of the bike divided by the total weight times by the wheelbase. So what actually is that saying? Well, you take the weight on the front of the bike, you divide that by the total weight, you have a percentage. It's your weight distribution. So your X position is directly related to your weight distribution. Now let's move on to the Y position. Now the equation is correct, but there are some things missing and that is kind of glossed over. So let's break down the equation. Starting with the first part, we have X minus the weight on the front times the wheelbase divided by the weight of the bike. Does that sound familiar? This is essentially X minus X. Now that's going to be a problem. It's always going to be zero. So what you should notice is that this is actually X before you lift the bike from the static position. Because what we're actually interested in is the change in X as we lift the bike. Then we have the next part, which is cos theta over sine theta. Now another way of putting this is cotangent. Essentially, it's a kind of gradient, so you can calculate how much something is going to change in the x or y. So we have a change in x from our original x minus our new x, multiplied by our cotangent, which gives us our change in y, or our y position in this case. So we start with the x value, our original x value. We subtract the new x value, giving us a change in x. Then we multiply that by the cotangent, and that's going to tell us our y position. There's one more thing to note about the equation that's been used here, and that is that the y position calculated is relative to the spindles. So if it's 0.3, it's 0.3 meters above the spindle, not the ground we actually need to add the wheel radius to get our true center of gravity position. So if you're interested in reading about this kind of stuff yourself and you're looking for some resources, uh, this is essentially the Bible on motorcycle dynamics. It's Vitor Casalta's motorcycle dynamics. We use it throughout university and it goes beyond anything we ever touch because it's much too complicated. The other book that I would recommend is Motorcycle Dynamics by John Robinson. I'll put that up here. You can find both of these on Amazon. Uh, John Robinson's Motorcycle Tuning is also available as a Kindle version and there's a number of different parts on different subjects, but this one uh, is for chassis. Now between the two, I'd say the John Robinson one is probably an easier read, a lot less technical in most places, but I don't think anyone is gonna to need to go as technical as you'll find in this book. It's also very difficult to understand at times. So between these two books, this one is extremely advanced and in order to understand it, you're probably going to need to study 
and research some physics and maths along the way just to be able to understand some of what's being said in this book. For Motorcycle Tuning by John Robinson, it's much more easy to read in places, but there are still some technical parts which uh, are very useful. Another thing that's mentioned in his video is about whether you stand up, putting all of your weight onto the pegs should lower your center of gravity. Let me explain why that isn't the case. So what we're doing by calculating the center of gravity, which Fortnite also explained himself, is we're averaging out all the weights that spread across the bike to this one location. And this, from here, this is where we are spreading the load. But this is not a point load calculation. See, if I apply a load here, I have an X position. I have no Y position. So of course, for this force, the center of gravity is basically here. Now, of course, when you're riding a motorcycle, the amount of force you can put into this peg is gonna assist your steering. If you're too short and you can't reach the pegs, maybe it's harder for you to push, you're gonna have trouble. So you're gonna get some rear sets so you can get your feet on them properly. So the mistake is to consider the rider's load as a point load on the pegs. See, we're considering the center of gravity, which is an average. Now, I also have a center of gravity, and my center of gravity is probably much higher up, nearer to my stomach. And if we average out my center of gravity as I stand, which is gonna be higher up than the bike, with the bike center of gravity, of course, you consider the average is gonna be somewhere in between. So yes, your wide position is going to increase if you stand up on your motorcycle. So now hopefully we understand the X and Y position for the center of gravity a bit better. So there's a number of things that we can move on to now. We have the center of gravity position in that it's all relating to weight transfer under braking and acceleration for wheelies and stoppies and things like this. So we'll get into those in the next videos. Now there was also someone in the comment section which rightly called out the fact that there was no mention of SAG. Now if you watch my previous videos on linkage ratios, you'll understand that we want an amount of SAG, which is the amount of compression of the rear suspension and front suspension under the static load of the motorcycle. And then we have rider SAG, which includes when the rider sits on the motorcycle. So if we, if we don't control the SAG when we change from a static position to a lifted position, we're allowing the suspension to change, which is changing the geometry of the bike, which is then changing the center of gravity position, which is going to knock on and make our calculation less accurate. We really want to control our conditions from the geometry to the position of the scales to the tilted angle to how we're going to balance it. So in industry, they're going to have some jigs so that we can really support it without interfering with the weight distribution. So the more changing X we get by lifting the front wheel higher and higher, the smaller the difference or the inaccuracies we're going to have from anything like the scales having inaccurate measurements or any slight support somewhere here or there. So for a more accurate calculation, we lift the front wheel higher up. Now for squat, what we should do is tie down the front suspension in the condition it is under the static load when we raise it up. Because when you raise the motorcycle up, if you're moving more weight onto the rear wheel, you would expect the front suspension to extend. So that's why we strap it down to keep it as consistent as possible. And in university, in racing and in industry, we typically do this experiment static with no one riding, with no one sitting on the motorcycle. Then we have a rider, then we have rider and pillion. And then we do it raised. And that requires some support because trying to lift a motorcycle up 30 centimeters on the front with a rider and a pillion and holding it statically, trying to lift your feet off the ground, you're asking for disaster. Anyway, I think I've covered everything I wanted to in this video, so thank you for sticking around and I'll see you next time.